welcome to the ultimate did you know Doctor Who or what you may may not know about Doctor Who. Before there was Infinity Wars and Endgame, there was another mass crossover extravaganza. That is the Stolen Earth slash the Journey's End. A fantastic finale to what is a fantastic series, probably the best of the uh, new Who era. I hope you enjoy this did you know Doctor Who special. As mentioned previously, this is arguably a three-part story with Turn Left, The Storm Nerf, and Journey's End. Whilst Red Daleks have appeared in Doctor Who and the Dalek movies, Susan and the Daleks, toys and comic books, and referenced in several audiobooks and merchandise, this is actually the first ever actual TV appearance of a Red Dalek. And it also continues the trend of a Red Dalek being in a leadership role. This is the first appearance of Davros for over 19 years. However, as I mentioned in my Bad Wolf slash Part in the Ways video, Davros was meant to have appeared in the Series 1 finale instead of the Emperor. But Davros was also, in fact, planned to appear in the Satan's Pit. But plans had changed with Russell T Davies holding on to Davros for a later date for a much more special occasion. This story not only serves as a finale to the fourth season, but it also serves as a finale to all four seasons of the Revival era at this point. Davies wanted to create the story as far back as 2005. There were several cut moments from the story, such as the Dalek ship blowing up Big Ben and the Shadow Proclamation containing several alien species from the show's past, such as a giant adipode, uh, Slavine, Quillotane, Vestiform, Jadoon, and more. However, budget got in the way. Davies also considered destroying the entirety of New York City, but it worried it caused issues for later stories. Bernard Cribbins came up with the idea to shoot a Dalek in the eye with a paintball gun in reference to the 60s movies which Cribbins appeared in. Wilfred's reaction to Rose as she blew up the same Dalek asking her if she wanted to swap weapons was ad-libbed by Bernard Cribbins. Harriet Jones was written into the story before the character's actress was informed and was a last minute addition made to redeem the character. Richard Dawkins agreed to his cameo only because his wife at the time, Lala Ward, originally played Romana. There's a lot of development history regarding the Supreme Dalek as it was initially designed with a large head, one design had it look like the special weapons Dalek, then one with a large stationary body and a see-through head. These designs were deemed too expensive so the design was rectified to having gold bars, three lights and a square placeholder for the lights. Whilst Davros has a metal hand as a result of it being blown off a revelation of the Daleks, this is actually not the first appearance of Davros with a metal hand as in the comics from the 80s and 90s depicted Davros with a claw. Interestingly enough, this is also the first appearance of a Supreme Dalek since Remembrance of the Daleks, so ironically that was Davros's last appearance also. There was originally a scene where Daleks also landed at Westminster and landed in which the Daleks exterminated the Prime Minister Aubrey Fairchild before the Dalek invasion force emerged from the saucer. An unseen character in the next Doctor was named Aubrey Fairchild. For the first time, the opening credits incorporated not two or three names, but six, adding Freema Agamon, John Barrowman, and Elizabeth Sladen to the Tennant, Tate, and Piper credits of the previous week. Another nod to the 60s Daleks movies is the fact that several Daleks have claws, referencing the movie Daleks having claws. The differences between the child-friendly Sarah Jane Adventures and the very arrow-orientated Torchwood are reflected on the on-screen conferences. Sarah mentions that she tries to steer away from Torchwood because they have too many guns, nodding to Luke as she does so. Despite this, Jack cannot resist flirting with her and she seems to appreciate his compliment. The concept of the bees leaving the Earth and heading to another planet as it seems the end is near strongly reflects the dolphins from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, who also left the planet right before impending doom. Though most likely a coincidence, it should be noted that Adams wrote the Hitchhiker's Guide and was a writer and scriptwriter editor for Doctor Who. When Sarah summons Mr. Smith, she complains about the musical fanfare that accompanies the computer's activation. This is a gag in which the Sarah Jane Adventures has the same fanfare which usually blurs whenever Mr. Smith is activated. This is the first time, however, that it's confirmed the characters actually hear the music. The weapon that Jack grabs is the gun made in Bad Wolf. This is actually the first on-screen appearance of this Shadow Proclamation. However, Shadow Proclamation have been mentioned loads of times, with the first mention being in the very first episode of the Revival era in Rose. Alonzo Frame from Voyage of the Damned was originally set to make a return appearance in the earlier drafts of the script, but was later dropped. He does of course appear in the end of time later on. Terry Molly was scheduled to reappear as Davros originally. The script originally features a lengthy flashback chronicling Davros's youth on Scaro, his experiments of Khaled soldiers, and the explosion which disfigured him. When the TARDIS is hurtling towards the headquarters of the Shadow Proclamation, a scene is reused from the Parting of the Ways, where the Ninth Doctor flew the TARDIS into the battle against the Daleks' fleet. 
which bombarded it with torpedoes. Coincidentally, this episode is centered around a major Dalek conflict. One of the stolen planets is Corfux Minor, which is from the Pirate Planet, the only classic era world to be stolen. Another cutscene that was filmed showed the Doctor giving Rose's Doctor a piece of the coral from the TARDIS so that he could grow his own TARDIS. Journey's End's original ending involved the Doctor following the final scene where he is alone in the TARDIS, being alerted to something on the monitor as he checks. Two Cybermen rise up from behind him, leading to the next story. It was cut as it was deemed inappropriate for the sad ending. Originally, Donna was to hear the sound of the TARDIS dematerializing, a brief look or registering on her face before Dean dismissed. This shot was dropped at the suggestion of Jude Lee Gardner, who reminded Davies that it had just been explicitly stated that if Donna remembered anything about the Doctor, she would die. The scene where the Daleks are speaking German is possibly a tongue-in-cheek reference to the fact that Terry Nation based the Daleks on the Nazis. The word exterminieren, which the German Daleks use, is not a common use in the German dubs of the episodes. The word used is Wirtschen, I don't know how to pronounce that, I am, do not speak German, which literally means reduced to nothing or destroyed. Joy. This is the only appearance of the sonic lipstick outside of the Sarah Jane adventures. Journey's End has probably one of the largest body counts in Doctor Who, with billions of Daleks, a substantial number of humans, and to an extent Donna. This is Sarah Jane's last ever appearance on Doctor Who, although she would still continue to appear in her own spin-off and would meet the 11th Doctor. This is the first story in which the TARDIS is fully staffed with six pilots, and the first time it is noted definitively that it was designed to be piloted by six people. When the Meta Crisis Doctor holds Rose's hand as they watch the TARDIS disappear. He does it with his right hand, the only part of the original Doctor. Davros's apparent last words are, Never forget, Doctor, you did this. I name you forever. You are Destroyer of Worlds. Destroyer of Worlds is a translation of a Kafrak Katri, a title which previously used by the Daleks to refer to the Doctor. The story was chosen to represent the 10th Doctor during the 50th anniversary. This is currently the last appearance of K9 in Doctor Who. In fact, the VFX shot of K9 teleporting into the attic to assist Mr. Smith was reused in Sarah Jane Adventures episode The Lost Boy. Shubu Kapoor, who played the frightened woman disintegrated by the reality bomb test, has appeared in Doctor Who once before. She made a guest appearance in the 1993 Children's Needs special as Jeeta Kapoor in a short called Dimensions and Time which was a crossover between Doctor Who and EastEnders. The Osterhagen key would destroy the Earth. The word Osterhagen is an anagram of the phrase Earth's gone. And that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the stolen Earth slash journey's end to many people and arguing myself as well. It's probably one of, if not the greatest Doctor Who story that has probably ever been told. It is such a fantastic celebration of Doctor Who over the years, especially the revival era in particular, a celebration of the past and the new. It celebrates the Doctor and the Daleks once again being the main threat and the Daleks are absolutely phenomenal in this like this is probably one of their best appearances up there with parting of the ways they are fearsome they are horrible they are just dreadful in every sense of the word i love the supreme dalek by the way the supreme dalek is quite possibly my favorite dalek design i have ever seen i love the red and gold it gives it that regal appearance it's so brilliant and davros being the main villain absolutely amazing davros was perfectly played his redesign is still the same as the previous Davros and it's just been updated in such a way that it looks great. Um, Davros is just fantastic. Everything about this story is fantastic. Seeing the companions all work together, um, seeing them all have their own moments of, you know, glimmer, or shine. You know, there's these moments where, you know, the companions go from being relatively you know you, you know you you don't get these appearances where like the, the companions are wasted if, if that makes sense you know they get their moments to shine you know where say for example sarah jane uh helping out <laughs> helping out the crew when they're about to be disintegrated you know you have jackie being jackie and saving sarah jane with by killing those daleks with mickey you know you have uh Hyatt Jones doing something at that one point. Rose, you know, kicking ass. You have Will, who's fantastic. You know, everything, it's like a jigsaw puzzle that is fitted in perfectly. And it's got this amazing picture. Um, and, you know, this this story does get dark. You know, there's that one scene where that family get brutally murdered by the Daleks. It just goes to show how brutal and evil these things are. The Daleks 
at their worst, if you think about it. You know, you don't know how many people they've killed during these uh, reality bomb tests. And the reality bomb itself is such an interesting uh, gimmick to use for this story. And I think it worked really well. I think this, you know, universe, dare I say, dimensional, <laughs> you know, ending device is fantastic. And it really is like this big epic finale. Um, Arguably one of the best finales. In fact, it is the best finale. I, I would go out and say, you know, this is fantastic in every sense of the word. Uh, it's a great celebration. It's a great finale. Everything works well. And the titles of this story, The Stolen Earth and Journey's End in particular, fantastic titles. Like, you know, if Doddy were to, you know, tragically end for whatever reason, this would have been a fantastic and perfect ending, in my opinion because it just worked so well. It worked so well. Um, but even then, it still continues. And it went on for quite a decent time afterwards, even though the, it never really hit the peak, as this story really was the peak of the revival era of Doctor Who. This really is a fantastic story. I recommend it. Like, this with Turn Left, in my opinion, is a three-part story. But of course, you know, similar to Heaven Sent, Hellbent, and all that, it's considered individual episodes. Go figure. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Did You Know Doctor Who, and I'll see you next time.